I'm going to ask you if they will to bring the lights on. I'm going to do something right now that's going to make the devil mad. I said, I'm going to do something to make the devil really mad. We're going to do something right now in this room that's about to release an anointing that's going to cause somebody that the doctor said had cancer for that cancer to be gone in the name of Jesus. Something's about to happen in this room right now with somebody that had a heart condition is going to leave in Jesus' name. Something's going to happen in this room right now that the, that the enemy said that the marriage was over, but God is about to restore the marriage. God is about to do something supernatural in somebody's life today because you dared to believe. You dared to believe. Now watch this. Stand right where you are. I'm just going to do it like this. I only know how. Somebody asked me today before church, they said, Pastor, how long, you know, Day's Appreciation Day, how long you been doing this? I said, a long time. And then I gave out the years I'd been pastoring, and then by, but then I came back and said, you know what, I've been doing it longer than that because I was born into a pastor's home. I was raised under a man of God that believed in the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. And all I know how to do, church, Pastor, how can you be, how can you do what you do? How can you, you know what? It's not, I don't do anything. All I do is surrender to him and I let him do what needs to be done because I can do anything through Christ today that gives me strength. I trust in him. Come here. I got a sermon to preach, but I, I'm going to give you the condensed version of it because I'm fixing to pray for somebody in this room today. There's an anointing for somebody to get healed in this room, somebody to get delivered in this house today. This is an atmosphere for a miracle. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible said they arrived at Bethsaida. And the scripture said they brought to them a blind man. And they begged God to touch him and to heal him. God's response, the Lord Jesus, his response to them begging him to heal him was this. Jesus took the blind man by the hand. And the Bible said he led him. Let him out of the village. Got him away from everybody else. Let him away from all the people in there. Somebody said, Pastor, why do you think that he led him away from the village? Well, the thing that I've always preached, and I still believe, is that he had to get him out away from a group of people and out of an atmosphere of doubt away from a group of people that did not believe that Jesus could do what he said he could do he had to get him away from all those doubters into a place where he could perform a miracle that's what I've always preached and I still believe that but when the Lord dropped the word for today in my spirit, I heard the Lord say, listen to this real, real softly, real softly. Make sure I got plenty of mic. I heard the Lord say, Tunja, you said something to me just recently. You were talking about the powerful presence of God in this church. And you said, Pastor, you know what I'm longing for and looking for? The supernatural. I want to see the blinded eyes open. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see the miracles of God. As I was preparing for this service this week, this is what the Lord spoke to me. He dropped this in my spirit. Now catch this. The Lord said these words to me, two words. Total trust. total trust 
When the Lord spoke that to me, I saw Mark 8 in a different way. Before I saw Mark 8 as Jesus trying to get him away from people that would doubt his healing. But then the Lord spoke something to me. I had the opportunity firsthand when I was young of living with my mom's mom and dad, my grandparents. My grandfather was completely blind, totally blind. Now I want you to watch this. I had the opportunity to observe him. As I lived with them while I was going to college, I, I watched I watched my grandfather navigate as a blind man by himself, no one leading him through his house. I watched him go through the living room, put his hand on the chairs and the furniture that was there. I watched him go in and out of the kitchen. I watched him all through the house, navigate through that house without a problem. And I began to realize that the way that my grandfather could move through that house and do it as well as he did was because he had learned his environment. Because he was familiar with where this piece of furniture was and where this chair was. He could navigate by himself. It was a familiar place to him. It was a place he knew. I also began to think about the fact that they say that when a person loses their sight, that the other senses become stronger, especially their, their hearing. I noticed that my f grandfather was familiar with certain sounds in the house, voices in the house. He knew things by what he could hear. His home became a place that he was comfortable in. He knew he could navigate by himself. Oh. And all of a sudden I began to say, Lord, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. That the Lord had to take this blind man out of the city and remove him from a place that he was comfortable with a place that he knew a place that he could navigate by himself from voices that he was used to hearing him to a place outside the city where the only thing that he knew was the one who had him by the hand the only one he knew was the one that he had now to totally He was now put in the position that he had to totally trust the one who had him by his hand. He knew nothing about, maybe he had never been outside the city. He knew nothing about this place. He was forced into a position of totally trusting God. Today, God's brought you to this house. And God is causing some of you to step outside of a place of comfort. You're, you're being forced and brought into a place now where you got to trust God. You don't have no other way. You're, you're, you're being brought out of places of familiarity. God is causing you to step out of your comfort zone and to take the Lord by the hand and you're having to trust God to lead me through my, this relationship lead me through this, this dark place in my life lead me through God cause me Lord today to totally and completely trust you pastor how can I do that how can I get there? How is it? That, how do you expect me to totally trust God? 
How do I do that? You know what you got to do? First of all, you got to realize today that, that in order to totally trust him, you got to remember that God knows everything. That means that God knows your future. That means that God knows what tomorrow brings. That means that the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, not only has he been in yesterday, but he's already in tomorrow. And he's already making a way. And he's already preparing something for you. Job said, in Job 6, 37, he said, consider, 37, 16, excuse me, do you know the clouds that, that hang poised? Do you know the clouds that hang poised? Those wonders of him who has perfect knowledge. I don't know how I'm going to get through. I don't know how I'm going to face it. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know what? It is perfectly, listen to me. Listen to me. I don't care where your faith is. I don't care what level of faith you have today. It doesn't matter because the Bible said if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can say unto the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. You don't have to know what comes tomorrow. You don't have to know how to do it because God already knows how to do it. All God's doing is asking you today to trust Trust. Trust him. Trust him. Why do I have to trust him? Because he holds your future. Why do I have to trust him? Because he is perfectly reliable. What do you mean, pastor? Number says he is a God. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not a human, so he does not change his mind. He Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? I'm here to tell you the people next to you will change. The people on your job will change. Things around you will change with the wind. But there is one who never changes. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he will be the same tomorrow. When you cannot rely on anything else, you can rely on the perfectly reliable God who cannot change and cannot lie to you. <clears throat> Here's thirdly. And this, guess what? I preach my sermon to you today. Thirdly. Why do I need to trust him, Pastor? <coughs> Excuse me. Why do I need to trust him? Because he knows what is good for you. He knows what's good for you. I said he knows what's good for you. When you don't know what's good for yourself, God knows what good, what's good for you. He, got, he knows what you need. <coughs> Excuse me. He knows when you need it. God knows. Look what the scripture says. <coughs> For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. And the Lord, now you got to see this, but you got to see it in a different light. You can't see it like you've always seen it. If God's going to do in you today what he needs to do, you got to see it like you've never seen it. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Now, here's the problem. Thank you, man. Here's the problem. Here, here, here's what you need to realize. You've got to start trusting God with what is good. See, all you can see is Psalms 84 as, oh, God will give me everything I want and everything I need. Oh, my God, God is about to bless me. 
If that's the only way you can see Psalms 84 and 11, it'll never work for you. Because all God is to you, if that's the way you see 84 and 11, all he is to you is the Santa Claus. But what you got to trust God with is the fact that God knows what is good for you. You see, what you are asking for may not be good for you. Oh, it's quiet in here. The one you're asking for, she may not be good for you. Y'all ain't hearing me. Today, you got to trust God that he knows what's good and everything that he knows is good, he'll make sure you get it. Let me say it like this. James said, you ask, but you ask amiss. The King James says amiss. What does that mean? That means you missed, you missed the mark. And the way you missed the mark is because you asked for something that was outside of the will of God. You see, if you're going to live this next season of your life, living in perfect harmony and peace, if you're going to live this next season of your life, of God bringing about miracles, then you're going to have to learn how to totally trust God. And totally trusting God doesn't mean that I ask God for something I want. God doesn't give it to me and I get mad. No, believing God and trusting God means, Lord, you know what is good. You know what I need. You know the miracle that I need in my life. And I trust you that you know what I need and you know what is good. So just give me what's good for me and just disregard what I want myself. See, here again, he had to get away from what was comfortable with him. Today, God's calling people out of a comfort zone. He's calling you out of a familiar place and into the place where you just lay all this other stuff you're trusting in aside. All this other stuff that brings, that, 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 that's just a, it's a, it's just a, a broken cistern. It's an artificial reservoir. It doesn't hold any water. It's no good. But today, God, today in this house, at this moment, I step out of my seat. I come to meet you, not asking for what I want, but to ask you to release in my life the good things that you know are good for me. I come trusting and believing you. I come today believing that you know all things, believing you're already in my future, believing that you are reliable and you do not lie to me, and that you know what I need. And so I come to you today to receive everything that you have for me. Somebody give God praise in this house. If you believe this is your moment, if you believe this is your hour, if you believe this is your season, that God is about to release it in your life, Now, this is, what, this is what we're going to do. This is what's got to happen in church. Let me tell you all. Everybody, everybody look at me. It's not as late as it normally is, so don't worry about what time it is. Look at me. Everybody look at me. This is what's got to happen in this day in which we live. we got to throw religion out. If we're going to see what you talk about, Tunja, if we're going to see that, religion has to go. Going through the motions has to go. Somebody having to stand up here for the next five or ten minutes and try to stir somebody emotionally to get you to move out of your seat and respond to God, it's got to go. 
You know what happened? You know why they received the miracles that they received? You know why Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are full of miracles of eyes being opened, blind eyes being opened, deaf ears being opened, the dead being raised? Because the Bible said that wherever Jesus went, they ran to him. They went where he was. They, they would trample over each other trying to get to him. Nobody needs to have to pry you out today. Nobody needs to have to mo work on your emotion to get you to move where Jesus is today. They're going to say, Sing that song again and as God moves on your heart don't walk down here run down here and receive today the miracle that God has for you you said and I believe it today come on sing the song hallelujah on somebody else you don't need to wait on somebody else you need to run down here yourself come on I believe you said it is done there's miracles in this house there's more of you get out of your seat run to the altar come to the place of sacrifice Come to where God can heal you and touch you all over this room today. When Jesus touched the woman with an issue of blood, she wasn't healed when Jesus spoke to her. She was healed when she spoke to herself. Now, Pastor, what you talk about? She said, before she ever got to Jesus, she said, before she ever got close to him. She said on the other side of the crowd, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I would be made whole. She got healed right then. And she didn't even realize it. Pastor, what do you mean? Jesus said it. That's what Jesus told her. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. What is God asking for? What does he want from you today? He just wants you to believe. And when you believe it, say it. It is done. I'm delivered. I'm free. I'm whole. I'm healed. It's done in Jesus' name. The miracles that we've talked about today and read about today happen only when men and women believe that Jesus is who he said he is. Lift your hands. Open up your mouth. Begin to declare it in this atmosphere. I believe it. You said it. It's done.
Lift your hands all over this room. Sing that. There's a man in this room and you have a problem in your right hip. Unbelievable pain. Something's been going on in that hip. Take your hand, put it on that hip right now and watch God heal you wherever you are. I don't know who you are, but whoever you are. And if there's more than one, do, you, do, it, do it, do it. 
receive it right now because God's healing somebody's hip right now in the name of Jesus your hip is being healed your right leg is being healed there's a miracle happening for you right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus. If, you have, if, you're, if you're having trouble with your heart right now, if there's heart conditions in this room, come and stand in front of me right here. If you've been having trouble with your heart, chest pains, heart trouble of any sort, come stand right here. Come stand right here in the name of Jesus. Come stand right here in the name of Jesus. Your faith has already made you whole. Your faith has already made you whole. Lift your hands and receive your miracle. The Lord said, what, what, what is your name? Emily. The Lord said, take your right hand, put it on your chest. In the name of Jesus, I want you to feel the power of God as it begins to touch your heart right now. The Lord said you'll feel it. Feel it right now. The Lord said you'll feel him touching your heart right now. You'll begin to feel your heart settle. In the name of Jesus, your heart is beginning to settle. You're beginning to, you're, you're beginning to feel your heart come into perfect rhythm right now in the name of Jesus. And it will work as God says it will work. In the name of Jesus, you have just now, by your faith, been made whole, says the Lord God. Somebody better praise God with her. Woo. Lift your hands and praise God for your healing. There's a miracle. Take your hand, put it on your chest. Say this with me. So you said, I believe it is done. You said, I believe and it is done. Now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there's healing in this atmosphere right now. Healing in this atmosphere. Anyone dealing with any kind of cancer, Dealing with any kind of cancer, any, any kind of cancer, even if it's not even, if it's something that's not even malignant, whatever you're doing, if you're dealing with anything, the doctors have told you and given you the ideal that there may be something there, come stand right here and get healed in Jesus' name. Come stand right here today and get healed in Jesus' name. Come stand today and be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Why does God need to do this today? Is this for a show? Is this is just is this no let me tell you what happened. Every time Jesus would heal somebody in the New Testament, in the four gospels, when he would heal people miraculously, it would cause men to believe. Healing everything is about the proclamation of the kingdom. Everything is about salvation. Healing is not about healing. Healing is about getting other people to believe that Jesus is who he said he is. When they get a miracle and they share it with other people, it causes them to believe that their God is real. So today in Jesus' name, say this with me. Say, you said, I believe. It's done. Say it again. Say, you said. Say it to him. Say, you said. I believe. It's done. 
One more time. You said, I believe, so it's done in Jesus' name. Somebody that believes it's done, praise him. Somebody that really believes it's done, praise him. I said, somebody that really believes it's done, praise him. Somebody that really believes God's given somebody a miracle, praise him. Somebody that believes God's healing you right now, praise him. Somebody that believes God's doing something supernatural in you right now, praise him. Somebody that believes that God is working it all out for your good and his glory, praise him today. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and say it. Come on, God's healing you today. God's delivering you today. God's setting you free today in this atmosphere. your voices come on you said I believe <laughs> you said it is done you said I believe you said it is done you said I believe What an anointing in this room right now. Jesus. Has my word not declared unto you this day that I am the God who heals all your diseases? Has my word not declared unto you today that I am God and that I change not? Has my word not declared to you today that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever? So I say unto you as your God this day, hear my word, says the Lord God Almighty. I was a healer, I am a healer, and I will be a healer. Receive your healing in this atmosphere, says the Lord God Almighty. Lift your hands and receive your healing. Lift your hands and receive your miracle. Lift your hands and receive everything that God has for you as the oil and the wine of the Holy Spirit of God are being poured out over this room right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, that's right, lift your voice. Come on, right, that's right, lift your voice in this atmosphere. Come on, that's right, praise God in this atmosphere. Come on and worship God in this atmosphere. This is an atmosphere of healing. You don't have to get in a hurry. God's doing something for somebody. God's delivering somebody across this sanctuary today. Hallelujah. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands all over this room. Come on, just worship the Lord. Come on. Some of you that are baptized in the Holy Ghost, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now all over this room. Pray in the Spirit. God's doing something supernatural. Pray in the Spirit in this room. Oh, there's healing in this room today. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. There's a healer in this house today. I said, there's a healer in this house today. Receive. Receive. Well, the presence of God's real in this room right now. Receive. Bless you, Jesus. We honor you today, God. We honor you today, God. Jesus. Wherever you are having a problem right now in your body, I just feel like God wants to touch you. All over this room, whether you're in the front or the back or right or left, just take your hand and place it wherever it needs to go right now. Oh, God, I feel him now. Place your hand where it is right now and let the warmth of the Holy Spirit, the oil of the Holy Spirit begin to flow through that hand into that body right now and receive a healing in Jesus' name. I believe you said, Lord. You said, Lord, I believe. You said, and I believe today. Jesus. I am the God that he let thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord. Your healer. I am the God that He let me. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the 
your hands all over this room one more time as we get ready to go today. What a healing. What a healing Jesus. What a healing Jesus. What a healing Jesus. Today we receive miracles. Today we receive signs. Today we receive wonders. Today we receive of you, God. Heal, Lord. Heal all of their diseases. Touch all of their bodies today. Transform by your power and by your presence. In Jesus' name. How many of you believe that God is a healer today? Oh, come on, praise him. Come on, praise him one last time. Come on, praise him because there's an atmosphere. An atmosphere of expectancy today. An atmosphere of miracles today. Come on, somebody needs to break forth in a praise that says, thank you, God. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for what you're releasing in this room. We receive it today, God. We receive it today, God. Today is a day of healings. Today's a day of signs. Today's a day of wonders. Today's the day of miracles. We thank God for his presence today. Amen. Come on, touch three people before you're seated and tell somebody God's a healer. <laughs> 